In this guide on the transformation shortcuts available within the software, we will be covering how you can use some of the different options here to create your vectors and designs directly through the keyboard without using the mouse and keyboard at the same time. This can help optimize your workflow depending on how you like to work. So it's a useful thing to learn to see if you can help improve your workflow for your projects. You can check out the guide at any time by going to the help menu and selecting keyboard shortcuts. This will bring up your internet browser with the correct page loaded for you. Here you can see your keyboard shortcuts and it goes into great depth about all the different options you have. To begin this video, we will be beginning with our polyline tool, which if you scroll down the page, you'll find just past that all of the options for moving your vectors around on the screen. Here you can see the polyline tool followed by the drawing circle and we shall be covering all of these as we go forward. Let me close this for now and we shall go back to the software. Let's open up the polyline tool as normal. And then in the drawing space we shall just click anywhere to start our first line. Now from here we can use a very useful tool which will use the direction our mouse is pointing as the direction for our line. So what we can do, for example in this case I shall press the number 3. And if you look down to the bottom right hand corner there you'll see there's now the, the, fret, the text value 3. I can now press the enter key and our line is now created of 3 inches long. We can do this in any direction so let me create another 3 inch long line by pressing 3 and enter and I now have another line. I can use this to quickly make a square for example just by typing in 3 and pressing enter and making sure my mouse is pointing in the right direction for the next section of the line. As you can see, because we've now ended back on top of the starting point, the line closes and I have now created my shape. You can use this to make more complicated shapes than just a square though. For example, if I start here in the top corner and click for my first point and go at a 45 degree angle, I can again do the same steps, so 3 and enter position my mouse so that it locks in and goes to a right angle degree and as you can see there it says A45 next to my mouse. I'm going to again type in enter and 3. Again 45 degrees, 3 and enter and then finally back down again 3 and enter. I have now created two identical 3 inch squares on the design using just the 3 and the enter key and my mouse in particular positions. This is the equivalent of using the angle and the line length options here on the tool form. For your shapes you can even use negative values if you need it. For example if I start a new point here and then drag it straight up, if I now enter in uh, the value say minus 2 and press enter you create a negative length line of 2 in the direction that you were moving your mouse. This works in every angle, so for example here I go 45 degrees again, negative 2 and enter, and here we go, we've now got a negative line going back down towards the origin for us, instead of up towards the edge of the project here. In addition, if you have an angle that you need to use which is not easy to use your mouse to define, what you can do is use the various shortcuts here that we have. So we let us start a new point as, as before. Now for example if I want this at a 33 degree angle which our snapping points do not easily grab hold of, we can use the keyboard to do this. So let us enter 33 and A for angle, then we want to put in a value for our length, in this case let's put 2, and then we just press L for length. And here we go, we have a line exactly 2 inches long at an angle of 33 degrees. This can be very useful to create angular shapes of exact sizes and angles to achieve the designs you're looking for using only the keyboard. You also have the option to add points at exact Cartesian coordinates. So let us enter the line tool once more, add our first point as before, 
And then from here, for example, we could enter the uh, value 5, x, 5, y. And we've created a point that goes to x5, y5. Then from there, we can then have the line extend out to the very edge of the work with uh, 9x and 5y. And as you can see, it goes perfectly horizontally from our previous point to the edge of the work. Let's close that out and then select everything with Control A and then delete with the delete key. With the polyline now discussed, let's go over some of our other drawing tools and how you can use shortcut keys to help improve those. Let's go to the circles. This is the most basic to start with. Here you can, as normal, click and drag your mouse and then let go to create a circle of any size. But in this case, what we want to do is click and drag and then using the keyboard, we want to type in the size we want. If we type in, for example, the number one and press enter, this will create a circle of radius one inch. Likewise, you can do the same and create a diameter value. So click and drag. And this time what you want to do is press the value you want. So in my case, I'll put number three and press the D key for diameter. And this has created our three inch diameter circle. You can use this to create circles of any size, but uh, let's leave that there and move on to ellipses. I'll close this down and delete our project with Control A and the Delete key. Ellipses are a bit more complex than circles, so this will take a few more steps. At the most basic level, you can start your ellipse at any point as usual using the mouse. Click and drag as before, and then press a value on the keyboard, for example 5 and Enter, to create a perfectly round ellipse. You can then use a greater combination of keys so you can then click and start your ellipse, type in a value, so five, W for width, then you want to type in the next value, so three, and H for height. As you can see here, we've created a width five ellipse with a height of three. And you can do this as many times as needed. As you can see here, I'm starting to create what looks like an eyeball. So let's put in three for the width, and three for the height. We have a simple design created solely with one click of the mouse and typing in the values we need. Back in the tool again, you can also use the existing values that are typed into the keys here. So let us start creating our ellipses before. And let's say we can easily snap to this top point here, but we can't easily snap to a horizontal point. So what we can do is enter the value that we want for our horizontal width, say six inches, and just press the X key. That will use our current height for us and just create it with a, an exact X length for us. Let's close out of the tool and delete everything again with Control A and delete. Now that we've done circles and ellipses, let's have a look at the rectangles. Let's go open the rectangle tool. And the first shape that we'll make is a basic square. So I'll click into this job and click and hold as usual. Now, if I type in a value of, let's say, four, and just press the enter key, we create a basic square with a sides of four inches. I can then create a rectangle shape. So let us draw a rectangle. And I will enter in the value that I want. So let's say four again, but this time I'm going to press W for width. And then I'm going to press one for height with a H. And you can see here I've created a rectangle within my square that fills up one quarter of that four inch side. Likewise with the ellipse, you can also use the existing values in the form to help snap to particular sizes. So let's say, for example, I have a rectangle that I wish to create that I know is going to be height of four inches because I can snap easily to this but I want it to be a width of six inches, which is not so easy to snap to from here. So what I can do to fix this is just type in six and X, and that will apply the X axis of six inches and use the current height. And this works as well for uh, the Y axis. 
So again, if I create a four inch wide and then just put in six Y, we get the same rectangle, but tall and thin this time. The rectangle tool is more complicated than the other tools as well, because we now have the option for corner types. So what you can do is enter in a rectangle as before, type in a value, which in this case, let's go with 0.5, press R for radius. And you can see in the bottom corner there, it says R 0.5. Then we shall type in a value again. So four inches in X. And as you can see, it's used the existing Y height to create the rectangle. Let's close out of the rectangle tool, select everything once more with control A and press delete. Now let's move on to the polygon tool. Here you can set the number of sides, which we will set to six for now to create hexagons. And like with the other tools, you can click into the space to begin creating your shape, enter in your basic value for the sides, which I'll put in three, and then press enter. And this is creating a polygon with a radius of three inches. So a diameter of six inches. Likewise with the circle, if I click and drag again, type in a value. So let's press seven and press D for diameter. You can see I created diameter seven polygon here. We also have the options to start creating our polygon by clicking into the job and then type in a value, which will be, the first one will be, let's say nine, press S for sides, and then type in a value for the radius again. So let's go with two and R for radius. And you can see here we have created a nine sided shape with a radius of two inches. Then like before, we will start a new one click and drag, then we'll enter in a five for the number of sides and press S for sides, then type in a value, which we'll put in 10 and then press D for diameter to create our 10 inch diameter polygon. Let's close out of this, select everything once more and press delete. We'll now move on to the last of the vector creation tools we'll cover with this guide on the transformation shortcuts which is the star tool. So just like with our other tools, we can click and drag and then enter a value. So let us go with two and press enter to create a basic star, which is going to have a radius of two inches. We can also just like with the polygon tool and the circle tool, draw it again and add in a value for the diameter. So that'll be five and D for diameter. Next, we get into some of the more complicated star related options. So we can use this to modify the number of points in the star. So we shall start our star as before, enter in the number of points we want for our star, which will be uh, seven. And then we press P for points. And then we can add in a radius value as well, which we will put in, uh, let's go with a one inch radius, so one R we have our seven pointed star in the middle of the job. Let's get rid of these to clear the space. Uh, next, likewise with the previous tool, uh, we can use four for the number of points, and then we'll have a diameter of two. So it'll be the number two and then D for diameter again. Lastly, we can now start manipulating the inner radius percentage as well with these values. So this will be quite a long string, so do bear with me. So we will start with drawing our star, entering a value for the number of points, which we'll go with five and then P for points. Then we'll put in a value for the percentage, which will go with 25 and then I for the internal radius. And then we should put in a value for the radius of the star, which we'll go with three and R for the radius. So we now have a very sharp pointy star with an inner percentage of only 25%. And to bring a close to the different quick drawing tools, we can do the same again, but this time we'll be using a diameter. So let us go with uh, an eight pointed star. So eight P, uh, an internal radius of let's go with 75 I for the internal radius and then a diameter of three. 
So that'll be 3D, and we've created our final star for today. Let's close this out, select everything, and press delete. Now that we've gone through all the different drawing tools and how to use some of the keyboard shortcuts with those, we'll now move on to the moving, scaling, and rotating options. Uh, for example, you can press the M key on the keyboard to bring up the Move Selection panel, the T key for the Set Size panel, or the R key to bring up the Rotation panel. For this though, we won't be using these shortcuts. Instead, we'll be using the keyboard with all of our keyboard shortcuts to achieve the results we're looking for. I'm just going to make a basic shape uh, it doesn't really matter what shape it is, I'm just using this as an example. So here we go. Let's drop that there and close out our polyline tool. And with this, we're going to show you some of the moving object shortcuts. So I need to just click on my item to select it and then click it again to bring up the transformation boxes. And I'm going to grab the center point and then just start dragging it around. As you can see, I could normally just move and drop it, um, but you can't get an exact length of movement here so easily. So what I'm going to do is uh, pick the direction I want to move it. So let's say I'm moving it across in X. I want to move it across two inches. So to do this, all I have to do is type in the number two and press enter. And as you can see, it moves exactly two inches across in X now, say we want to move it to uh, an exact position within the job space. So we'll click and select it again. And then this time, like we've been doing previously, we'll just type in some values. So let's say, for example, we want to move it to 4x and 4y. And that has moved the center point to 4x, 4y for us, as you can see here on the job. And then finally, we have the relative move position. Now to do this, uh, as before, Grab and select it. And now we can type in a value. So we'll go one, comma, one, and enter. And that has moved it one inch across in X and one inch up in Y relative to the position it was before. So now its center point will be at five, five on the job space. So that's everything for the moving shortcut keys. Uh, so next we'll just cover the one for rotation. Now to activate this one, when you've got the transformation bounding box open like this, select one of the four corner rotational points. You can see these little black boxes here. And as you can see, I can start rotating it freehand myself, but I can also type in a value. So let's put in uh, an angle of, let's say 30 degrees and press enter. And you can see here it's rotated exactly 30 degrees for me counterclockwise. There are also two other shortcut keys on the keyboard, uh, which are the nine and the zero keys on your top row of numbers. These are a 45 degree rotation, clockwise and anti-clockwise respectively. So you can easily get 45 or 90 degree rotations just by repeatedly using these keys, which can be very useful sometimes. Now that the rotation options have been covered, let's move on to the scaling options. The scaling options can be activated by using the scaling points at the four corners of the bounding box here and on the four edges. So let's grab one of these as before. And if I freehand scale it out, you can see I can stretch it in this direction. But if I, for example, type in uh, 2S, that doubles the scale of it in that orientation. So you can increase the size of your parts easily doing this. Likewise, I could, for example, uh, grab the corner here. And what I'll do is I'll put in 0.5 S, and that is halved the size of it in both directions at the same time. So you can use this to be quite versatile. One other thing you can do is if you want to set it to a specific size, you can use this setup. So first of all, grab one of the corners. This is important. You can't use the side edges for this one, only the corners. So here we go. We can move it in and out. 
and I'm going to put in a value. So let's go with two inches, comma, six inches and enter. And you can see it is now two inches tall and six inches across. Now you might have also noticed that this is respecting the bounding box as it would normally be orientated, but it's managing to maintain the orientation with these changes. So this can be very helpful if you need to have a part that is at not at a perfect 90 degree angle to the workspace, but still maintain and still manage the scaling of the part as you go. The final part for this will be using the side points here for the scaling. And this is just to set this direct scale here independently. So you don't scale both sides at once. So like before, we had this set to six before with our previous command. This time we'll go with three and enter. And you can see now it's only three inches across instead of six. Finally, I just want to show that you can also use the moving shortcut keys with node editing. So you can do this easily by starting node editing with the N key on the keyboard. And as you can see here, you can see the nodes of my little rough shape. We'll select a few of these nodes so that they are all applied with the same movement. And just like with the moving shortcuts for the whole object, you can move it in a desired direction and then press on the keyboard a number for the exact distance you want to actually move it in that direction. So let's say, for example, I'm going to go straight up one inch. And you can see here it's jumped up and moved it for me that one inch. Likewise, you could say move this one down two inches and you can see it moves it for me two inches. Let's delete this off and this will be the end of our transformation shortcuts guide. I hope it's been helpful for you all and uh, I look forward to seeing you on our next video.